Well, welcome to step one of the seven steps to wellness. Now, I gotta tell you right away, creating peace, that is step one. Creating peace is the most important because where our thoughts go, everything else goes. And the first thing that we need to keep in mind is we say creating peace here because preventing stress isn't a very good goal. It's not a very good thing to go after. And here's why. As long as you're a living, breathing human being that has the ability to fog a mirror, you're going to have stress. So we can't just think of, gee, I hope I can decrease or prevent stress. That's like you're driving to Arizona and you see water on the street and you get up there and where's the water? It's a mirage. It's a false reality. It's a bad goal. It's very short-sighted to be quite frank with you. Um, so creating peace. There's always this tug of war of where are we at on the peace scale versus stress scale. You just get out of stress, that leaves you at zero. You got nothing in the tank there. That doesn't make you very resourceful. Yeah, we gotta have certain kinds of challenges. You might call it you stress or the good kind of stress. But for our purposes, we don't wanna have stress. Um, we'll call all stress the bad kind of stress, which is basically what? It's failure to adapt. That creates stress, okay? And so how can we create peace and at the same time prevent stress? Well, what I have here is six different steps. And read below here in the text below this video to find out more information on this. But our first thing is focus. We want to keep a clear vision of what it is that we want so that we don't get sidetracked by all these different things that are trying to get our attention. There's a lot of money that goes into trying to get you to buy stuff that you don't need with money that you don't have to try to impress people that you really don't even care about that aren't even in your circle of influence. So we have to keep focus, stay on track, lest we go in the wrong direction of stress. The next one is faith. You know, some definitions of health also talk about the spiritual aspect of things. It's mental and physical health, yes, but also social health and even spiritual health. I'm not a guru in this subject, but what I can tell you is there's a lot of people out there that have guilt. They feel depressed. They're trying to drive forward, but they keep on looking in the rear view mirror and they have stress, they have guilt over bad stuff that they've done in their lifetime. And I believe that we were created by a God who loves us. And when we offend somebody else, we can ask for their forgiveness and we can make that relationship correct. But I believe that we need to seek forgiveness from God as well and have our faith put in the correct place on the correct person. And that is my, you know, um, I don't want to say opinion, but that's my personal belief. We're not here to condemn anybody for anything that they believe in. But I will just say that there's a lot of people that feel depressed out there. They think they're all alone in this world and they don't think there's any purpose to life. And I think that's something that you really need to figure out if you are struggling with this. The next thing, organization. In the movie Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, Robin Williams said, you're the man of the house now, don't be messy. So a cluttered mind is going to give us a cluttered life. So we got to make sure that our home environment and our work environment is very clean and organized. The biggest challenge that I have personally is paper all over the place. So you might do yourself a favor, go to the store, get a scanner, get that stuff into a computer, get it backed up off site so you can get rid of some of the paper in your life and stay organized. The next one is execution. How good are you at, at executing the fundamentals, okay? Um, your certain body movements. And it sounds kind of strange, but there's something called primal movements or prime pattern movements. How good can you lunge? How well can you squat without having one of your knees kind of buckle in on you? So how, how, how good can you walk in a straight line without dragging yourself, without sort of limping? How, good, how well can you push something while maintaining a correct position in your spine? That's just the physical aspect of it, but what about the day-to-day -day things that we, that we do? 
Uh, do you have a planner? Do you have an organizer? And do you actually keep that? Okay. Do you keep your um, days separate? A lot of people will make resolutions, but then they kind of get mixed up around February, March or so. And so we want to make sure that we're staying organized and that we're executing properly. The next one is momentum. You know, you go to the swimming pool and there'll be a kid down there and he say, mommy, mommy, watch me. And next thing you know, he's taking his floaties off and she's jumping into the pool in the deep end. And kids love to have this sense of momentum that they're improving, that they're moving up in the world, even if it's baby steps. So what courses of action are you taking right now to develop yourself incrementally, measurably, so you can look back and say, hey, yeah, I've improved in that one skill. I have taken time to learn about you know, what it's like to travel to Europe or to learn that new language or whatever it is. So that you can look back and build with confidence knowing that you have been able to develop some momentum of executing what you set out to do. And all it is is just keeping track of that. And last but not least is time management. There's a lot of good time management books out there, seminars on the subject, and most of them are gonna say this. What? They're gonna say, procrastination is the destroyer of dreams. It's really, really evil and you can't procrastinate. And they're gonna try to get you to buy a certain planner to somewhat um, organize your life. And that's true, but they really don't take into account the unrealistic expectation of nobody's schedule in a day perfectly goes like this. Do you ever have to go to the bathroom? Yes. Do you allot for time and gaps in there? No, because do you really wanna to have to write that down three or four times? Of course not. So setting realistic expectations of time management, what are you gonna do when your schedule is interrupted? What are you gonna do when you go to the post office during the holidays, you know you're gonna be standing in line for a while. You know, you could take part like most other people do. And it's, it's, it's very interesting to me how people get to be very kind of sociable out there in the world when there's something to complain about. It's unfortunate, but it happens. You'll go to the post office during the holiday season and if the line isn't moving like this fast, somebody will look back and say, you have been waiting in line for 10 minutes. I don't know what this person's, you know what I'm saying? So if you knew that you're going to be standing in line for a while, why not have some kind of a list in your wallet or your purse, this thing that you've been meaning to memorize, whip that thing out, use that time, use a, a magazine clipping or something, maybe even something that's on your smartphone and just get that thing out and just start looking at it. Get yourself absorbed in it and use all of your senses, pay, pay attention and focus, and that'll make the time go by faster. I had a psychology teacher in high school, he said, he said that boredom is due to the lack of concentration. And so we can be better at managing our time if we had organized, right, and anticipated that we're gonna be standing in line for a while and um, sharpen our focus. So these are just some of my ideas on how we can create peace in our life and prevent stress. I'll see you on the next series called Energy Breathing. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Prior Lake Spinal Care, 952-226-7222 or email us at info at priorlakespinalcare.com.